We are continuing on Shukaru Farachayim, studying Siman Samech, the continuation of Halachot of Piyat Shema, Daf Sadi Gimel Amud Aleph of Dafei Mishnah Bura. Maran writes, Bracha Shnia Ahavat Olam. So the first Bracha was discussed in Siman Nuntet of Yotzer Or, and now the second Bracha prior to Kriyat Shema is the Bracha of Ahavat Olam, which the Ashkenazim say Ahavarabah, as the Ramah adds over here, ויש אומרים אהבה רבה וכן נוהגים בכל אשכנז. מנהג אב אשכנזים is to say אהבה רבה, the נוסח of the, the גמרא, and most ראשונים, so מראיין דף יא that we had recently, and the שולחה ארוך is אהבת עולם. ואין הפותחת בברוך. מרן acknowledges the fact that this ברכה, even though that is a ברכה, it does not start with ברוך, because is a bracha hasmucha lechaverta, it's an adjacent bracha to the first one. So the, the bracha for the first bracha of Kriya Shema, the Baruch, Ata Hashem, Erokeru Melech HaOlam, the Shemu Malchut of the first bracha is considered effective for the future brachot as well. So therefore the second bracha is not starting with Baruch Ata Hashem, it's just Avat Olam. ואם היא פותרת ברכת התורה, עיין לאל סימן מ"ז, we already had a discussion in the הלכות על ברכת התורה, that if you forgot to say ברכת התורה, and you already have said the ברכה of אהבת עולם, that בדיעבד perhaps covers the ברכת התורה that you had to say, so therefore afterwards, if someone remembered after שחרית that he has not said ברכת השחר today. So one of the ברכות that he doesn't go back to say would be Birkat Torah, because he already has said the bracha of Ahavat Olam, in which he covered the ideas of the praise to HaKadosh Baruch Hu for Torah, HaTorat HaShelimatanu, Baruch Hu Keres HaShodatanu. So you have that text already in, in uh, the bracha, and therefore it covers the bracha of Torah as well. Says the Mishnah Ram. אהבת עולם, פירוש תחילת הברכה מתחילת אהבת עולם. The beginning of the bracha starts with אהבת עולם, um, which, again, the reason that אהבת עולם is attached to Shema, in Seder Ayom it explains that the love that we have for HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the reason that we say Shema Yisrael Hashem, Alekin Hashem Echad, the oneness of Hashem, and the the love that we have with it, that we don't forget Hashem, and He does not forget us, and He's always with us, that is the Avah Hadadid, the mutual love that exists between HaKadosh Baruch Hu and His nation, it's just like the Gemara says, that uh, we say, Shema Yisrael Hashem, Hashem Echad, we say, there's nobody like Hashem, and Hashem says, Mi Kam Ha Yisrael Goy Echad Baris. Hashem also says, there's no one like the Jews. It, that's the, the relationship, that's a two-way street of um, the mutual love. So therefore, we put that right prior, right before uh, saying Kriyat Shema. Again, that the Minhag Ashkenaz is to say Only at, in the morning time, they say but in Arvid, they actually do say Ahavat Olam and the Maharit explains the reason that they say in the morning and at night Olam is because in the morning we show the time that the Kadosh Baruch Hu, uh, chose us from all the other nations, which is the Torah was given in the morning, basically. Um, and therefore we start and we end which is again is choosing us with love, but the bracha that we say at night is representing the ahavah that the Kosh has constantly, even in the time of galut, time of the morning is when Hashem chose us, when um, everything was good, like the daylight that's warm and nice and everything is clear in the light. Those are the times that 
But they said, we're not in Galut. When we got the Torah in our Sinai, when we came out of Mitzrayim. So that's the initial Ava that Hashem showed us. But Ava Rabbah, and that's Ava Rabbah. Avad Olam, the eternal love that Hashem never forsakes Am Yisrael, that's the love that you see in Galut. That even if you're in Galut, Hashem never lets go of us. That's at night. When it's night time, which represents Galut and unclear times and so on, then we say Avad Olam, that it is an eternal love. Even though that you may not see it at moments, and it's dark and you, you can't, um, recognize that love that HaKadosh Baruch Hu has is sometimes you have a hidden love that's always is there underlining fact of the, the relationship we have with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. that's something beautiful that the Ma'arit explains in explanation of that nuscha, um, the, the difference between Ava Rabah and Ahavat Olam. Now continues. The pasuk says, "Boker is Rabbi Munatecha." That's also only the chachila. But the event, if you said Avad Olam, if an Ashkenazi, despite their minhag, would say Avad Olam, that's also good. Maran writes in Sif Bet, Karak Kriyat Shema Belo Bracha, Yatsai Dechovat Kriyat Shema. If you said Shema without saying the brachot. You are still Yotze, the, the brachot of Kriyat Shema. You did not say, but the Shema itself, you're Yotze. So therefore, you could go back afterwards and say the brachot without saying Shema. Maran writes, once you're at it and you're saying the brachot, say the Kriyat Shema again with the brachot as well. Return Omar Afal Gav the Enal Makvot. Even though they don't have to say Shema with the Brachot, we already said Shema on time earlier on. Still, you go back to say it with the Brachot. Ve'yotze yedechovat kriyat Shema af im lo berach klal. Mikol makom yedechovat Brachot lo yatsa ve'achol levarech ve'lo kriyat Shema ki lo nitkenu davka al kriyat Shema she'en mevarech asher kideshanu be'mitzvotav etzivanu says. Um, the Mishnah Bura, these are not a regular, ordinary birkata mitzvah that you have to say it right before you do the mitzvah. These are brachot that you say regardless of saying Shema then or not, it's true that they have been instituted to be said before Shema and after Shema, but it's not like your regular birkata mitzvah. Regular birkata mitzvah, if you're not putting on tefillin, you cannot say laniach tefillin. But over here, you can say Shema before and say the brachot alone an hour later without saying Shema because their institution of tefillah, they have been put together with Shema, but they have a life of their own. So if you have already said Shema, technically you don't need to say them together with Shema. It says, Maran, Sedra brachot enu ma'kev she'im hikdim shniya l'rishona yatsai dechovat brachot. The order of the brachot also is not ma'akiv, Maranin Sif Gimel. That if you said, avat olam, prior to yotzer or, you're yotzer, it's fine. We had this actually before, but if you started saying it, what do you do? You go back to say it in order, you don't go back to say it in order. But mm -hmm. logically speaking, the seder is not ma'akiv, and hence, you could even do it out of order, but of course, as the Mishnah Bura says here, that is Bidi Evet only, that you're Yotze. You don't want to lachat chila do that, right? And the Kafachayim says that according to Zohar Kadosh and, and Ariya Ari Kadosh, if you switch the order, you're Mahapech Seder HaOlamot, and therefore you should never ever do that. Again, this is something that we had before, and we're going to have it later as well. In We had it in Siman Nunbet and Nundalet, the Kafchaim said, you can't skip just parts of Tfilah, even though that technically speaking, you could say Baruch Shamar and say Ashrei and say the last time Luka and jump to, to Ishtabach. But it says, don't do it. And then in hopes that you're going to continue um, and complete the set of Tfilah after Tfilah. It says, because you are switching the set of the Olamot. And that is something that costs you a lot. Al-Pi Kabbalah, everything is, is 
is like key after key, every key opens the door. You can't go through this door before you go through, uh, you know, the previous door. So you can't jump really, you have to go step by step. It is something that very methodically and meticulously has been um, ordained and, and um, structured. Therefore, you don't change it. And he says in here also that the Zohar, the Ariya Kadosh, um, the Brachav, Yotzer Or has to be, must be before the Bracha of Avat Olam, and hence don't change them around. Says Maran, in Sif Dalet, Yesh Omrim She'en Mitzvot Tzrichot Kavana, Yesh Omrim She'srichot Kavana. Now, this is a big concept, so we're going to um, spend some time on this, perhaps not all of it even today. There are those who say, Mitzvot tzrichot kavana. A mitzvah needs kavana. In other words, if you do a mitzvah without um, having proper kavana in mind, you're not yotze. And the others say, no, mitzvot, if you act actively doing a mitzvah, even if you didn't have the kav- mindfulness that I am here by doing a mitzvah, um, even from the Torah, you would not um, need any kavana and you would be fine. So, on one hand, the Rabbeinu Yonah, the Tosafot, say mitzvot tzrichot kavana. And on the other hand, the Bar Arachot Gedulot, others, the Rosh, say mitzvot and tzrichot kavana. It's machlok, a large machloket um, between the Rishonim, how to pass in the Gemara. The Gemara really speaks about this. And um, again, this is a, a, a large machloket between the Rishonim. Now, what's the Allah? Maran writes, and also here would be the mitzvah of Kriyat Shema we're specifically talking about. So Maran writes, Yesh um, Omrim I think I said it the other way around. The, the mitzvah and Sirichot Kavana. That, that is Tosafot and uh, Rabbeinu Yonah, the whole that Mitzvot do not need Kavana, and the ones who disagree would be the Bahag, the Baal Arachot Kedolot, the, um, the Rosh, and others. So, Ota Mitzvah, Halacha. So, Maran brings it in this order, Yesh Yesh Halacha Ki Yesh Batra. When Maran brings two Yesh Omrims, Halacha is Ki Yesh Batra, and here is clear, here Maran says it, Halacha, is the mitzvot srichot kavana, and you have to have mindfulness for doing a mitzvah. Now, we're going to discuss a lot of details about mitzvah darabanan, mitzvah doraita, and all the details that comes with it, but let us discuss one uh, simple, one, one simple uh, case that, that could happen for everyone. You sit and eat in the sukkah. If you say, especially in California, when the weather is good, you know, when, when you go to to East Coast, when it's freezing cold, and you have to sit in the sukkah, you can't help but think that I'm only doing this because Hashem said so. Otherwise, I would never be here. But here in California, it's much nicer. People do get out and eat outside under gazebos and outside out, outdoors anyways. So if you're sitting there and eating mindlessly, you're not having in mind that I am eating this kazait of bread because tonight is the first night of Sukkot and you have to eat a kazait in the Sukkot. You didn't have any kavanai, just having dinner, having dinner with family. It's a nice thing having dinner with the family. You have to go back and eat again that kazait. You're not yotze. Now, Shlomo Zama Orbach says something even much bigger. He has, actually, this is the, the first printed chuba in in his Sefer Shuvot of Bichat Shlomo is this question. He says, forget about the first time. Even during the Chag, when you want to eat in the Sukkah, you're sitting and eating a sandwich. So bread is asur to eat outside the Sukkah. It's suuda. Suuda you cannot have outside the Sukkah. So eating a nice sandwich inside the Sukkah, the Madrin Mila Madrin, beautiful Sukkah, but you're completely mindless. You're not thinking at all about eating in the Sukkah. So he has a khatira. For sure, you're not yotze. But is it that you're not doing the mitzvah of dwelling in the sukkah? Or imagine if that's the first night and you actually have the mitzvah of eating kazait 
in the sukkah. But you're completely minus. Is it that you just did not fulfill your mitzvah of eating a kazayit in the sukkah? Or is it maybe worse than that? Not only you didn't fulfill your mitzvah of eating in the sukkah, but you are equivalent of somebody that ate the kazayit because the sandwich was eaten, right? You ate the sandwich. But maybe this is the equivalent of you eating outside sukkah because once you were not yotze and you had completely um, no mind, mindset that you're in the sukkah, you know, maybe this should be considered that you ate outside sukkah so you get an avera of eating outside sukkah. How serious do you take this mitzvot tzrichot kavana? Right? And his maskana is actually that you do get an avera of eating outside the sukkah. Even though that I'm sitting under my sukkah eating. But if you're mindless, you are defined by your mind, by your kavana. If you completely are mindless, it's as, as though you're mamash outside the sukkah. But you're in the sukkah, but you're outside the sukkah. Because your mind is not there. So that's a, that's a very powerful thought. You know, you, you are what your mindset is. You are where your mindset is. And that's the psak of Shulcha Aruch. Now, this machloket really should cover both rabbinic and biblical mitzvot. In other words, those who say mitzvot sirchot kavana, say, well, mitzvot sirchot kavana, every mitzvah needs kavana. Those who say mitzvot and sirchot kavana, they say, well, even the Doraitas don't need kavana. And when we pass in that, uh, like Maran says, halacha, is like the mandamar that mitzvot sirchot kavana, is it talking about the Doraitas, or is it also talking that the Rabbanans, also mitzvot Rabbanan, need kavana? So that's something that we have to spend some time. So it says, let's start it at least today, and maybe tomorrow we'll have, um, we'll spend a little bit more time to, to discussing this in a, in a more profound way. The next few. So it says, the Mishnah Bura Yesh Omrim, Dad Refiyah Mitba'er Mina Poskim, Shne Kavanot Yesh Le Mitzvah. There are two Kavanot for every Mitzvah. What are they? One is your heart's kavana focus on the mitzvah itself. And the second one is, I am not just I'm mindful that I am um, eating in the sukkah, but this is my mitzvah. I have to be your say mitzvah of eating a kazai tonight in the, in the sukkah. So I'm do, fulfilling my obligation of eating in the sukkah, putting on tefillin. Not only that I'm mindful of what I'm doing, but this is my obligation to be Yotze with it. What does that mean? The Hainu, Shechave Lekayem Bazek Asher Siva Hashem Kemosh Katava Bach. That you are saying, I am doing what Hashem has commanded me to do with this action that I am about to do right now. The Kavanata Mitzvah Shenizkar Bazek Hasaif En Talui Kalal Ve Kavanata Lev. The Kavanata Mitzvah in this if in Shukharu is not connected with kavanat halev for the mitzvah itself. That you have in mind, it's not talking about you understand the words that you're saying. We're not talking about that. Right? You have, when you say Shema, right? One is understand the words that you're saying. Read it with kavanat. What does that mean? Focus on the words that you're saying. But then there's another element of kavana, have kavana to be yotze. That means you're mindful, not just that I'm reading a beautiful piece of Tanakh, but this is actually a mitzvah of kumecha. I am fulfilling my mitzvah of saying Shema. And in your heart, there's no other thoughts crossing your mind and heart. Kigon bekriyat Shema, tfila, bekadamazon, bekitush, all of these items that we say. That you should be fully focused on saying it when they are say, when they are being said. That's according to everyone a mitzvah to, to have kavana. But the if you didn't have kavana, you're yotze. Levadi pasuk rishon shel kriyat shema ubrikat avot shel tefila. Aside from the first 
pasuk or first three pesukim of Baal Shema and first bracha, which is three brachot also of Tfilah. Kemo Shebe Bo'ar Lekam. Rak Sheme Chulakim Be'inyan Im Chayav Lechaven Kodem Shematchila Mitzvah Latzet Ba'asiyat Ota Mitzvah. The Kavanah of understanding the words is according to everyone. The machloket over here of Rishonim is not about understanding the words of Shema that you're saying. It's about, do I need to pause for a moment before I start saying Shema and say, hereby I am ready. Hashem has said, we understand that this is a mitzvah of Kriyat Shema. I am hereby doing that mitzvah. Nothing to do with how much kavana I'm going to have understanding the words that I'm going to utter in the next few minutes, but that I am doing the mitzvah of Kriyat Shema, not just reading a part of Tevilah. This is a mitzvah of Raita that Hashem had said, say Shema in the morning, say Shema in the afternoon. I am doing that. Do you need to have that kavana, or can you just go through the words and daven a Tevilah of kavana? Nice understanding Shema Yisrael Hashem. Uh, understanding the words have a lot of kavana in the saying of the words, but I don't have to have a kavana, a specific kavana that I'm doing the mitzvah of Kriyat Shema in the morning. Why should I have that kavana? I'm doing it. Like Hashem said, do it. I'm doing it. Who says that I need to bear in mind before I do it? You told me to, to say Shema. I'm saying Shema. Why do you be mindful that I am listening to Hashem who told me to do Shema in the morning? Why do I have to have that? That is the machloka that mitzvot zirchot kavana or not. Nothing to do with how much intent you have when you say the words of Shema. That's a separate kavana. Right? And this is the machloka that we're talking about over here. And even here, everybody agrees that's a good thing to have mindfulness and intent. You know, and, and be aware of the fact that I'm doing mitzvah the oraita, as the Gemara says in the Darim, which is a Gemara in Samach Bet in, in Masechet the Darim. Rabbi Yehuda ben Sadok says, "I said Darim Hashem poalam, do the things properly. The Shem Shamayim, the Shem Hashem who has commanded you to do them." And Pasuk in Yeshaya says, the, you know, "One of my fam- you know famous pasuk, one of my favorites in Yeshaya Perik Chavtet." But the hiratam what he mitzvah and Hashem elumada. We don't want our mitzvot, our doing of the mitzvot, to turn into a robotic, mechanical um, action out of rote. We don't want that. Of course, because of a graal ha, the ita besiman chet ayin sham. Yeah, we have this in siman chet. We have it also in siman hey earlier on um, by kavanata Hashem when you say. The name of Hashem should have Kavana. Earlier on in, in Ishtabura, we discussed that in Siman Hay. Okay. Shesrichot Kavana. So there are those who say he doesn't need Kavana, and Yesh Omrim Shesrichot Kavana. That man the Amar, Im lo kivel latzedi de chobah ba'asiyat ha mitzvah, lo yatza min ha-Torah. If you didn't bear in mind that this is my Shema that I'm saying, you said the Shema with utmost Kavana even, you did not fulfill your mitzvah, though, right? I have to do it again. Sarech lachzor v'la asota. But he did not bear in mind that this that I'm going to be saying in the next few minutes is a mitzvah, though, right? Hashem has commanded me to say Shema in the mornings and Shema at night. If you didn't have that in mind, you have to say Shema again, right? And this is again, um, same thing that if you do something that you prevent yourself from doing avera, right? Kemoken haose davar kol shehu shene marbo isurim vehu nimna mela asotam katav kafachaim she beet asiatos arich lekaven she mekayem bekach et mitzvat lo taase hashayechet lo. There also you have to have kavana. I am staying away from this avera. When Ishkai says, when you go to get a haircut, and I tell the barber, leave my peot alone, right? You should have kavana that I'm mekayem now the mitzvah of keeping peot. Well, I'm not doing anything with my peot. I'm just telling him not to cut it, right? But that's also, you're staying away from an avera 
think cotton, I don't mean to have long, oh, even though the Mishchai do write, does write that, but not to do it number one. Number one would be, or zero for sure, would be Asur. Many people do um, short haircuts. If you can't well, hold it, or according to many, hold it and bend it back to its roots, then it's short, you know, it's too short. So depending on how your machine is, is on number one or number half, whatever it is, many of the people who have very short haircut on the sides, they actually get into a very questionable area of halakha, but maybe they're doing the isur of, of, of cutting the peot. Unlike the beard that uh, when you shave with a razor is a problem. And, you know, the shaving machines is different, uh, the shavers is different, different question by itself. But unlike that, the peot arosh, even if you don't shave them, they're just very short, and you did it with scissors, but very short, still is a problem. So, Vereshchai says, even though that you're not doing anything, but you're staying away from an avera, you should still have in, have in mind, because we supposed to record kavana. So, you're having kavana to do that, and the Kavachayim says a similar thing as well. Now, How about mitzvot ben adam lechaveru? Right, there are mitzvot which are ben adam lechaveru, like, you know, interpersonal relationships. So Chacham Badia writes that those mitzvot you could do even without kavana at the time of, of doing them because the purpose of the mitzvah is to be good and to create goodness in the world between the people. It's not your relationship with Hashem, it's that, that too, but it's the interpersonal, and therefore, there's no difference if you had Kavana in doing it or not. You don't necessarily need Kavana, says, um, says Harvadia, on, uh, on, on that question. Again, says the Mishnabura. When you're Ali, the law of Arech Azala Mitzvah, the beloved Haki is Kama de Ot Binyana Bracha, a few in Vadai, look even Barishana. So Mishnabura says, even though that we say, you're not Yotze if you didn't have Kavana, but when you go back to do the Mitzvah, don't say Bracha again on it, because Brachot, Lakel, still you have, you have, you have quest, questionable thing over there, and Hashem, this, this is something that we started, but uh, the background of this, and some of the very Gishmak details of Halakha, we'll discuss Hashem in the days to come.